हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ब्यूटी ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर सो ह्योर आई एम बैक विद अनदर वीडियो ऑन द एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड एनालिसिस ऑफ द पोएम द कोल्ड वेदर दिस वीडियो विल नॉट ओनली गिव यू अ क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द पोएम बट यू विल आल्सो हैव अ क्लियर कांसेप्ट अबाउट इट and no matter whatever or from wherever the question is asked about the poem you will be able to answer them thoroughly and come up with flying colors now too much talk has been done so let us focus on our topic the cold weather so before starting the poem let me tell you if you are new to the channel then please go and subscribe it the cold weather is a poem written by the irish american poet James Patrick Kinney written in the 1960s during the African American Civil Rights Movement Kinney was outraged by inhuman discriminatory attitudes at the time and wrote this poem to prompt some serious soul searching how often are we wise enough to rise above our egos how foolish are we when we give in to our own prejudices Its message is relevant even today when we face outlooks that are likely to cause disagreements or arguments between people in the world which leads to hatred and violence. So let us start with the explanation of this poem starting with the first stanza. Six human strat by happen stands in bleak and bitter cold each one possessed a stick of wood or so the story is told it means that the poet recounts a tale he has heard of six persons caught together in the grip of severe winter and probably each one of them had a stick in their hand now here do note the poet's use of the word humans as he wants to draw attention to the gathering as specific individuals rather than as a collective group they were trapped by happenstance implies that there was no escape from the situation created by chance the adjectives dark and bitter describes the cold that adds to the ominous feeling okay so moving on to the next stanza their dying fire in need of logs the first man held his back for the faces round the fire he noticed one was black this stanza cuts into a key character in the story that is the dying fire the group's possibility of happening something does not look good in the heart of winter keeping warm is essential for survival The fire here offers a chance for salvation. If each person would use their respective logs to feed the fire, this dying fire is a silent appeal to the group to help themselves by helping each other. Let me tell you, the next verse is reveal how the situation unfolds. We feel, we find that one person withheld his log from the fire only because it would benefit the black person. now this is racism where there is a discrimination because of a person's color and race the man will not even warm himself if someone he looks down upon simply because of his skin color now moving on to the third stanza the next man looking across the way saw one knot of his church and couldn't bring himself to give the fire his stick of birch In this stanza we see that the second person looked across the fire and saw someone who he knew then shared his religious ideology and just because of that he can't bear to give up his log to the communal fire now this is by godry which means being intolerably devoted to one's own opinions and prejudices moving further to the next stanza the third one sat in tattered clothes he gave his coat a hitch why should his log be put to use to warm the idle rich now in this paragraph the focus shifts here is a person who seems poor his tattered old torn clothes in the cold weather hint at poverty 
He perhaps felt the cold more than the others as we notice that he gave his coat a hitch. That is, he adjusted it closer to his body to dry out some warmth from the inadequate clothing. But here, but here too is a dead end. We see that he too is a victim of classicism, which means discrimination based on social and economic class. He is defensive and in his eyes, the rich do not deserve his meager reaction, which, the stick at, which is the stick at that moment. So he will not part with a stick. Moving on to the fifth stanza of the poem. The rich man just back... The rich man just sat back and thought of the wealth he had in store and how to keep what he had earned from the lazy, shiftless poor. Here, at cross purposes, we find the next exhibit of apathy, that is, the rich man. Since his mind is caught up holding his riches in his head, so he is noticing and so he is not noticing and realizing the reality. Greed blinds him as he selfishly and secretly wishes to keep his wealth. The wealth for him here is the stick which is holding in the hand. Moving on to the sixth stanza. The black man's face bespoke revenge as the fire passed from his sight. For all he saw in his stick of wood was a chance to spy the white. So we see here that even the victim becomes an abuser. We know the black person has experienced racism just as we talked about it in the first paragraph. Revenge from the atrocities that he had faced from the white people was the only thing in his mind. We wonder if he had already resigned himself to dying as he saw the fire pass from his sight. He realized that the fire was fast getting spent, but the spark of human kindness had died in him, even literally too. He chose to let the people in the group die. He would perish, but he would take the others he hated down with him as well. Now let us see what next stanza holds. The last man of his forlorn group did not accept for gain. Giving only way to those who gave was how he played the game. So for the first time in the poem, the poet foreshadows the fate of the group by finally describing the bunch as forlorn or hopeless. Until then, the poet had reserved the judgment, allowing the reader instead to examine each individual in turn and derive his or her conclusion. Unfortunately, we find that the last person also perpetuates the vicious circle of inertia. They share a look among themselves where each hopes that the other will do something that all of them want. But none of them are willing to initiate. The last person also played a losing move in the game. It is the metaphor for the game of life. Now finally coming on to the last stanza, the logs held tight in death still hands was proof of human sin. They then died from the cold without, they died from the cold within. So in this last stanza, we witness the serious consequence of the group's rigidity of spirit. Death comes and it is personified here with still hands. Each individual became their own agent of death with their hands frozen stiff with their refusal to act. The fact that each of them died with the firewood in their hands suggests the twisted motives in retaining it to them. The final lines abound with irony. We realize that it was not the cold weather outside that really killed the group, but it was the cold in their hearts the lack of warm human spirits, that is, the cold within. Now, let us have a look at the analysis of the poem. The poem is a reminder to overcome our personal demons and be open to the wisdom of an egalitarian view, 
which means an attitude where everyone is considered equal in worth. This narrative poem tells a story to protest against bigotry and racism. This piece comprises eight quatrains, that is, four lines per stanza, with an approximate A, B, C, B end rhyme scheme. The poem uses simple language and structure to ensure that the message is not diluted. Kine has very skillfully used visual imagery to engage the reader throughout the poem. Now, let us see what message does the poem convey. The message that the poet tries to give through this poem is that discriminatory attitude and hatred that humans have against one another on the basis of race, class and religion is futile. It is self-destructive. Now, the editors of ICAC Treasure Trove have summed it up very well. The poem is simple yet powerful reminder that if we selfishly hold on to the world's resources and the wealth that it has to offer, if we persist in discriminating on grounds of race, caste, gender and ethnicity, we are all lost. The six persons that had gathered around a fire in a chill had one thing common among them, that is human sin. As the poet says it, the cold within, the lack of warmth in the human heart that brought their death in the end. It only teaches us to live together, to live and let live. Now let us have a look at the figure of speech used in the poem. So the Skinny's poem, The Cold Within, is rich in its use of poetic devices. So the literary devices used in the poem are, first one is alliteration. It is the repetition of similar constant sounds at the beginning of adjacent words. For example, in the line, in bleak and bitter cold, we could see that in there is a repetition of B in bleak and bitter. The next figure of speech used is metaphor. It is an indirect and implied comparison of two different things where there is a point of similarity. For example, in the line, giving only to those who gave was how we played the game. In these lines, human life is compared to a game. The last man would give something to one who could give something in return. This is how we play the game of life. The comparison of life to a game is a metaphor. So children, this was it about the poem. I hope you understood the poem well. If not, then go through my video twice or thrice. You'll be able to get things thoroughly even without the book. And if you have any queries, do let me know in my comment section. This is Beauty Bhardwaj. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you.